After spending so much time with Kindles and Kobos, I finally got my hands on a Nook. And wow, this device is so different than all the Kindles and Kobos I've used. In today's video, we're doing a deep dive review of the Glowlight 3 and figuring out why this device is so different and if I think it's better than the Kindle or the Kobo. Hi there, Raigri Jika Khalsa, Raigri Jiki Fateh. My name is Manith Bal Singh. On this channel, we talk about the tools and techniques to live a more productive and intentional life. If that sounds like something you're interested in, consider pressing the subscribe button down below. Now, first things first, let's discuss the buying experience and the tech specs of this device. The Glowlight 3 starts at 119 from Barnes and Nobles. It has no color options or anything like that. It only comes in one configuration and you can only get it in eight gigabytes of storage. It has a 300 DPI display, which is not quite the same as 300 PPI. We'll talk about that more later on. And it also has no waterproofing or no support for audiobooks. I consider this a direct competitor to the Kindle Paperwhite. So compared to that, it's missing quite a few things. Now unboxing the Nook was a really fun experience. I think it's more like an Apple product than any other e-reader that I've unboxed so far. It came in a white box, really high quality. Unboxing it just felt really nice and premium. But once you get inside and pull the Nook out, I have to say the device itself feels nothing like an Apple product. In terms of build quality, this thing is entirely plastic. It has this soft rubber touch kind of design. It is really soft and on their website, they actually advertise it as a comfortable holding experience. That's definitely one way to think about it. On my side, I think it's more of a cheaper feel than all the other devices I've used. It doesn't really feel too high quality. That's mainly because the plasticky feel that's rubbery is all around the device, the front and the back and it just doesn't have much premium quality to it at all. Now it is very durable and very grippy to hold, so I will give it that. Functionally speaking, it is a great device for that. And then also, it does get quite a few fingerprints, but that is not unique to this device. Every other e-reader I've had so far also gets fingerprints, but the rubbery texture material does not prevent that at all either. One other interesting design element is the back of the device is kind of rounded. It's not a flat design. It does sit flat on the desk, but it has a rounded edge to it. It's really interesting. It feels very old school. I wouldn't really call this a modern design by any means. Now putting that rounded design on the side for right now, what really makes this feel really outdated are the bezels on this device. The front has these massive atrocious bezels on the top, bottom, left, and right. They're like almost an inch large, I would say, on all sides. It's really, really taking away from the experience of using this Nook. Now I've gotten comments on my other videos whenever I talk about bezels how no one really cares about them. But I would argue that when you look at this compared to another device that has little bezels, you will immediately feel the difference. It really, really makes a difference when you're reading and is holding the device. These bezels are huge and just makes the screen look that much smaller. Now, as I mentioned, this does have a 300 DPI display. That's not the same measurement that other devices use that use PPI, but I did my research and it seems like 300 DPI is still really high quality quality. And after using it for a little while, I do agree it is very high quality. The screen itself is also a six inch display, which puts it right on par with all the other devices in this price range. So the screen quality and the screen size is really good, but the bezels just make it seem and feel a lot smaller. Now I am very interested to read more books in the Barnes and Nobles catalog. Different books have different formatting that look different on the screen. And when I do that, I will get a better idea of what the screen quality is like. I also get a bunch of questions usually about what books I like to read. If you're interested in learning more about that, I have a link down below for my email newsletter. Every single week I send an email out with the books I'm currently reading. I hope that will answer that question for those of you who are interested in following along with my books. Now going back to the display itself, I have to say it's a very interesting experience. It's not a flush display, so it's not like a Kindle Paperwhite, for example, a glass front. It has an indent, so you don't really have a flat front. It kind of goes into the device a little bit. And I like this a lot, actually. Now, yes, with the glass front, you have more of that premium feel. But with this device, you don't have that glass front at all. And because of that, you feel closer to the page. I really feel like I'm touching the ink on the page because there's no gap between the screen itself and my finger. Now, the Nook also has backlight technology, which is really cool. That's why they call it glow light. I really like the branding they have behind this. There's no ambiguity around what this glow light means. It's a very simple slider 
here for adjusting the brightness of the display. And it actually also has something called night mode. Again, I really like the branding of this. It's basically warm light temperature control. I love how this device at this price point has that warm light. And I also love how they just call it night mode and you can adjust it according to the sunlight with the sunset. It's really, really nice and very, very intuitive to use. There is no ambient light sensor though, so you do have to adjust the brightness at your own pace whenever you want to adjust it. And the night mode could be set to work with the sun schedule, which is really nice automatically. And I do also like that there's an automatic shortcut. If you press and hold the home button, it will actually disable the entire backlight of the device, which can be very handy if you're reading outside. That's a really quick way to disable the backlight if you don't need it. Now, speaking of the home button, that segues really nicely into this next section. This device has so many freaking buttons all over the device. It has a home button, which is very, very unique. It has a power button. It also has four different page turn buttons. Buttons. There's just buttons on every single side of this device. It's really, really overkill. I really do appreciate that this has page turn buttons at this 119 price point. That is very cool. What I don't understand though, is why they put page turn buttons on both sides of the device. That was really, really confusing to me actually. From what I can tell, the page turn buttons on both sides do the same exact thing. They're only there because you might be a lefty or a righty, depending how you wanna hold the device. Again, I really appreciate that they did this, but honestly, it's just really overkill. Having all these buttons really makes no sense. You also have the home button, which is an extra button compared to most other devices in this category. The home button is also not really a button. It's kind of like the Nook logo that they just turned into a button. You don't really think it's a button until you see the instructions come up on the screen. It's also very different to use in terms of the software. I'm very used to just pressing the back button on the screen to get back to the home screen, like on the Kobo and on the Kindle. But on this device, you have to use the home button to get back to certain places in the software. It's all very confusing. It's just not the same experience I'm used to with all my other devices in today's world. Don't get me wrong, I really do think there's a place for buttons, even in modern technology right now. I sometimes wish buttons were there where they're no longer there. But on this device, I think they just put too many buttons and they could have had a better balance with using software and removing the buttons entirely. Now speaking of the software experience, I won't get too much into that. I plan on making an entire video dedicated to it, but my first impressions after reading about one book so far on the Nook, I have to say it's really, really different than Kindle and Kobo. I do appreciate that they have more shortcuts. Like I mentioned, if you press and hold the home button, it disables the backlight. If you press and hold the page turn buttons, it also quickly skips ahead multiple pages or to the next chapter. Those are cool features that I haven't seen before. The UI as a whole though does feel a bit more clunky to use compared to Kindle and Kobo. I do intend on giving it a proper chance and reading a few more books on this thing before making a proper review. So stay tuned for that. Alongside all these buttons, we also have a micro USB charger. I wish it was USB-C, but this is a common complaint that I have with my Kindles and Kobos as well. I do think in the future, Future, with newer versions of these devices, we will be seeing this transition to USB-C. At the end of the day, this device helps us read more books and that's what matters. I also really enjoy that it's from Barnes and Nobles. I love going into their stores and supporting local bookstores like that. It's also really convenient like Apple, if you have an issue with the device, you can literally walk into a Barnes and Noble store and all the associates there can support it, which is very, very handy compared to Kindle and Kobo where you can't really do that. If you're interested in buying this device, I have a link in the description below. Also on the screen right now, I have a link for the video I made on the Kobo Clara HD. That is very similar to this device in terms of price, but it has a different set of features and different style. Check that video out. You may be interested in that too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.